Hey there, I'm Tyler Watts. I'm an independent game developer focused on empowering aspiring game developers everywhere. I'm actually pretty new to game development and I still have a lot to learn. However, I've been learning a lot with my current indie project, Hookscrap. It's a 2D top-down space shooter roguelike with an emphasis on fast fluid combat. Using your hacker harpoon, you can scrap enemy ships to upgrade your own. One thing I've learned from this project is just how powerful a good game design document can be. Using a game design document, we were able to turn what started out as a game jam game into a nearly complete indie release. In this video, Hookscrap designer Jack and I will be sharing with you how you can create a similar game design document and why you should even bother in the first place. Let's go. Now, before we jump into creating your first game design document, it's important you know its purpose. A game design document, otherwise known as a GDD, acts as a guide for what your project ought to be. It lays out elements such as the gameplay, the player's experience, all things we'll be covering in this video, so make sure you stick around to the end. Now, already it might be clear for you to see just how impactful a game design document can be. On the off chance you don't, a good game design document can be great for a multitude of reasons. Firstly, it effectively lays out the goals of your project. Secondly, it acts as a great point of reference while you develop features or mechanics. It also sets a hard scope on your game, thereby removing any unnecessary additions and changes that will only add to your dev time. And last but not least, it acts as a great pitching tool. At Surprise Studios, we actually call the GDD our game's bible, and from these reasons, it should be pretty clear why. By taking the time to create a good GDD, you'll ensure your project gets done in an efficient and timely manner, while also staying true to your vision. And with that, let's jump right in. So Jack, what's your advice for those looking to make their first game design document? I would definitely start by keeping in mind that there is no right way to make a design document. Every game, every team, every project scope is going to be different. And because of that, you're going to need to keep that in mind when you're making your design document. Sometimes your design docs could just be scribblings on a whiteboard. When you look into GDDs and like professional games work, you're going to find massive documents that are easily like 60 to 100 pages long absolutely everything written out in incredible detail for every team and the reason like you have that kind of format is just because of how big those teams are versus a smaller team you may not need that because you you see those people every day or you talk to them all the time so make sure you're not just looking up a gdd template and filling it out because you, you often won't need to do everything that you'll find in those if you're looking for examples of what you should put into a gdd i highly recommend googling like AAA titles um, and seeing if you can find the design documents. Uh, something else I think is, is really, really helpful for new designers is to research the MDA framework. MDA stands for Mechanics, Dynamics, and Aesthetics. Basically, it's this idea in game design that when you're designing something, you have the mechanics, which is the like literal exact way that like something works in the game, the dynamic, uh, how that thing interacts with other parts of the gameplay and how the player sees the gameplay. Um, and then the aesthetic is the visual, emotional, and narrative aspects that the player perceives. Uh, a, a good example from our game Hook Scrap, there's a mechanic where when ships are destroyed, they drop an amount of uh, scrap based off of some stats that the, the ships hold. Each ship has a different type of, sh of scrap that they usually drop, and that by itself is the pure mechanical implementation. The dynamic is that the player can figure out which types of ships drop which types of scrap, and that lets them target specific ships um, to build certain items that they need those specific scrap pieces for or or whatever the dynamic there is that it lets them have knowledge to make a choice and then the aesthetic maybe you only get these hyperdrive parts from the racing ships and the player can perceive the aesthetic that it's because those ships are super fast and they need all of those hyperdrive parts that's the aesthetic using mda and design document uh, is super helpful not only will you design games better using MDA, but also when you have to think about the, the literal implementation, that can help your, your teammates recognize what it is that they need to do um, when they're working on stuff. The dynamics lets your teammates know the intention. If they don't know the reason why you're making a mechanic, 
they may implement it in a way that that doesn't satisfy the requirements because they didn't know what the intention was. And then, of course, the aesthetic. Sometimes the way you do something matters more than what it is you do. There's a there's a million ways to make a character move in a game, but if your aesthetic requires the character to move in a specific way, that needs to be uh, written out somewhere. Make sure that in your design that you're asking yourself questions about every choice that you make having to actually write out why you're putting something into the game and why it makes sense can save you a lot of time because maybe you'll realize wait i don't actually need to add whatever thingy that i'm putting into this it doesn't really fit with the rest of the gameplay or doesn't fit with the narrative or there might just be a better way to do it when it comes to design documents learning to be a good technical writer is really important. Technical writing just means your goal is to be as clear, concise, and as readable as possible. It's very boring. If you hate <laughs> writing, you're going to hate this. Um, every, every person I've talked to, um, when I tell them, oh, I like making documentation, they think I'm crazy. Uh, and they're probably right. You also make some killer documents, so I'm okay with it. <laughs> yeah, but it, all that really matters is you keep those principles in mind. Um, you don't want to write a big old document for, for your teammates to read. They go to it and then they have to spend just as much time asking you what things mean or where they can find stuff. Because then, like, why even make a document if, you, if they can't figure it out on their own? If you're on a very small team or you're working by yourself um, and you're making your design document, I highly recommend that at the end of it, you also go ahead and, and make some sort of product backlog for yourself. Um, or at least, like, work on it as you're going so that you keep your scope in mind. Yeah, it seems like you had a lot to say on the, on the game design document. I feel like a lot of what you said here is really going to help these devs out. Thanks, Jack. So it's my hope that with these tips, you'll be able to put together a great game design document that you're proud of. With it, you'll be able to clearly communicate ideas to your team and also have your goals and objectives listed out for everyone to see. And just remember, every game is different. No two game design documents are going to be the same. If you're in need of more help, you're free to go to my website, gomakegames.net and schedule a phone call or face-to-face -face meeting with me. You can also join the Go Make Games Discord server where you can get feedback from other members of the community, talk about video topics, and more. Finally, if you like this video and want to support the channel, be sure to subscribe, like, and share down below. I make videos like these every week. You can check out next week's video right here. And until then, dev on.